Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about the area of parallelograms. Let's get started. All right, before we talk about how to find the area of parallelograms, let's back up a little bit. Well, first, what are parallelograms? Well, they're quadrilaterals. What are quadrilaterals? They're polygons. So let's start there. What are polygons? Well, these are all examples of polygons. These are not. What's the difference? Well, a polygon is a closed figure in a plane made up of three or more line segments. Now, let's break that down. First, closed. That is closed. But if I do the same and I stop there, this little opening here means it is not closed and therefore not a polygon. Next, it is in a plane. What does that mean? We're not talking about like an airplane. What we're talking about is it's two-dimensional. Okay, It's a two-dimensional figure, not three-dimensional. And lastly, it is made up of three or more line segments that intersect at their endpoints. Now what that means is, well, if you ever try to make a polygon with only two sides, it's really difficult. It's always going to be open. It's impossible. So you got to have at least three, and they have to end at their endpoints. So if I did something like this, one, two, three, these do not intersect at their endpoints. This is an endpoint. And that is an endpoint, and they do not intersect at those endpoints. So that is not a polygon. All right, now that we remember the basics of polygons, let's talk about the different types. Well, we have polygons with three sides, triangles. We've got polygons with four sides, quadrilaterals, five sides, pentagons, six sides, hexagons, and so on. Let's focus on just the quadrilaterals. And if we look at the quadrilaterals, uh, there's a lot of different kinds, but the, there's some that have special names. Um, because they are special. We've got trapezoids, we've got kites, and then we've got parallelograms. And if you look for parallelograms, there are different kinds of parallelograms. We're going to focus on parallelograms in general, okay? Especially with how to find the area of them. So first, what exactly is a parallelogram? It's a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. Those sides, the opposite sides, also are the same length. Now let's talk about how to find the area of a parallelogram. And to start, we're going to start with a rectangle. Rectangles are parallelograms. But we want to know how to find the area uh, of a parallelogram that is not a rectangle. So if it looks a little bit different. So what we can do is start with a rectangle. And we know how to find the area of a rectangle. Length times width. You've done it since probably fourth or fifth grade. But what if it looks different? What if we cut off a triangle from that rectangle with a little chop? Now that we've got a rectangle um, and actually a trapezoid, if I move that rectangle and those right angles line up on the other side and we put it together, this is a parallelogram. Did we change the area from the rectangle that we had before? And the answer is no. It still covers the same amount of space. The area is exactly the same. We just moved some of it from one part to the other. So now let's talk about how to actually find the area of that. So here we go. The area of a parallelogram is just the product of its base and its height. And we know product means multiplication. So area of a parallelogram is equal to base times height. Okay? Now notice we don't use length and width, and there's a reason for that. Okay? One is, if you look at this, and I ask you, well, what's the length and the width? You would say, well, okay, well, maybe this we could call the width. Is this a length, or is that a length? And, it, and you get confused, okay? because it doesn't have right angles. We use base and height. And the key is the base, oftentimes you think of it as the bottom, right? But it doesn't have to be. 
I could rotate this up and it could look like that, and this could be the base, okay? It doesn't matter. Uh, bases could, could be different lengths depending on how the, the shape is um, written, okay? But for here, that's going to be my base, and my height, this is the key. The height has to be perpendicular to the base, which means it needs to form a right angle. So this is not my height, okay? That is my height. And it makes sense, right? If we think of ourselves, if I go to the doctor and they're, they're going to measure my height, they don't take uh, a ruler, or not a ruler, but a, a tape measure, and measure from over there diagonally up to the top of my head. They make me stand straight, and they measure perpendicular with the ground, straight up. That would be your height. It'd be great if they measured it from over there because I'd be a lot taller, but that's not how they do it. So here, if this was my base, my height would be right there. And that's how you find the area of a parallelogram. All right, example one, find the area of each parallelogram. So what we're looking for is the base times the height. And remember, base and height have to be perpendicular. So if I look here, you know, I've got this 11 meters over here. But notice, I don't have any length that's para, uh, perpendicular to it. So this is just here to mess with you. It's just here to trick you. Don't fall for it. 10 meters and 12 meters, those are perpendicular. So 10 meters is my base. Perpendicular to that, straight up, is 12 meters my height. So for area, very simple, 10 times 12, which is 120. And remember, this is area, so the units have to be squared. So 120 meters squared. Box my hands. Let's look at B. Um, same thing. We've got three different lengths here, um, but not all of them are going to have a perpendicular relationship. So if I look at this and I think, well, what's my base? Nothing's really on the bottom. we got a point here, but that's okay. You can rearrange it however you want. So if I say, well, what if I just rotated it down here and this six and a half was on the bottom, was my base? Well, then my height would be going perpendicular to that. Well, that's great. Here it is, four feet. This, that angle right there is not 90 degrees. So this, again, is there just to mess with you. It's just to trick you. So here we go. Area is base times height. The base we're going to say is six and a half feet times my height which is four and I can use the distributive property if I want four times six is twenty four plus a half times four is two which gives me twenty six units it's feet but it's area so I'm going to have feet squared and box my answer Here's some to try on your own. Okay, here's the last example. Find the area of the shaded region. So if we look here, uh, I've got a parallelogram, and I, you may notice a few new markings on here. You see these little arrows on the sides. Now, what that means is the arrows, the sides that have the same arrows, so these both have one those little arrows on there, that means they are parallel with each other. You notice these ones have two, and that's because they are parallel with each other. Uh, they're showing that those lines are parallel, or those line segments are parallel with each other. Anyways, let's get back to the problem. Uh, so we've got a parallelogram, but then we've got this cutout here, um, and it's 10 by 10, so this cutout square. We want to find just the area of the shaded part that's in blue. So what do we do? Well, when you think of something that's cut out, that should probably make you think of subtraction. What if we had the area of the entire parallelogram, and then we cut out or subtracted the area of that square? What's left? Just the area of the shaded region. So that's what we're going to do. So area of the entire parallelogram, again, base times height. Here's my base, 16 feet. Perpendicular right here is the height. So I've got 
16 times 20. This represents the area of my entire parallelogram. And I'm going to subtract the cutout, which is the area of that square, which is 10 times 10. And now let's just simplify. So 16 times 20, 320 minus 100 will leave me with 220. And the units here are going to be square feet or feet squared. That is the area of the shaded region. Here's one to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.